Vsauce, I'm Jake and come in here, there is a giant prehistoric sea monster that absorbed massive amounts of radiation roaming the streets. In fact, it's been called the king of monsters because Godzilla is incredibly large. Here, have a menu. According to legendary pictures, Godzilla is 355 feet tall, 50 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty, and weighs 90,000 tons. Imagine a cruise ship with legs standing upright. But it raises the question, is a creature of that scale possible? Could Godzilla exist? At 90,000 tons, Godzilla is a very big thing. A thing that would need about 215 million calories a day. It is estimated that the adult human body has 110,000 calories. So if Godzilla had a taste for people, he would need to devour 1,950 of them every day increasing the global mortality rate by 1.3%, or he could just eat 826,000 waffle tacos. So is there any living thing that comes close to Godzilla's weight? Well, I made a chart. At the bottom of the chart, we have a human being. I used a completely accurate, unphotoshopped image of myself as representation. At 2.2 tons, the saltwater crocodile, which is the heaviest reptile, at 11 tons, the heaviest land animal, the African bush elephant, then the heaviest animal to have ever existed, the blue whale at 209 tons. For heaviest organism that we know of, there's the panda, a clonal colony of aspen trees at 6,600 tons, 13.6 times less than Godzilla. He actually weighs a little over half of all the gold we have ever mined. Not only that, but he is 295 feet taller than the Soro Poseidon, the tallest dinosaur that we have yet to discover. In addition to being the heaviest living creature, he would also be the tallest, and including his tail, the longest. Fortunately for us, we wouldn't need missiles or bullets to destroy the King of Monsters, just gravity and the Square Cube Law. Let's say this cube is bone and the area of its face is one centimeter squared giving it a volume of one centimeter cubed. If we want to double the size, the area, its strength, multiplies by four. But its volume, thus its weight and mass, multiplies by eight. As you continue to scale up, the bones get bigger faster than they get stronger, eventually weighing more than they can support and collapsing under the pressure. This can be seen to a degree with Robert Wadlow, the tallest human being in recorded history. At eight foot 11 inches tall and 440 pounds, he had to wear leg braces and use a cane because his legs had trouble supporting the rest of him. He passed away from an infected blister on his foot due to poor blood circulation. And that's another issue, blood pressure. The larger and taller you are, the more powerful your heart would have to be to successfully fight gravity and pump blood throughout your body at a consistent rate. In the ocean, Godzilla would fare a bit better because the water would help support his weight. It's the reason why whales can be as large as they are. But once emerging from the depths and stepping foot onto the beach, he would sink into the earth due to his immense foot pressure. His bones and cartilage would give out under his weight and his body slamming against the ground would be the extent of the destruction. Also, we'd be able to make 350 handbags from his feet. And since it takes pain about two feet per second to travel through the nervous system, he would be dead on the ground before the signal even reached his brain. According to paleontologist Dr. Mike Taylor, even a Godzilla at one-eighth the size would collapse under the pressure. But what if Godzilla could walk around and cause destruction to a city like New York? How much would that damage cost? Well, my friends at CinemaSins made a video detailing just that. There's a link in the description, and I definitely recommend checking it out, especially because we don't have to worry about a giant monster squishing our fleshy bodies so we can spend more time watching amazing videos or experiencing the beauty of nature. And as always, thanks for watching.